Greetings, friend. I will show you how to solve this classic Sudoku by Sam Kaplan Lines by using set equivalence theory. And I'll give you all my tips, tricks, and strategies as I do it. Click on the link below if you want to try the puzzle yourself. And with that, it's solving time. Okay, this is a unique looking puzzle. Let's see if I did that. Now, you remember, if you look at my other set equivalence theory puzzles uh, videos, you know, the idea is we're looking to kind of match two different sets, an orange set and a purple set, knowns and unknowns. And so this has got a very unique grid. So if I come down here, what do these digits have in common in column one? Uh, one, seven, nine. Well, they're all odd. They're all odd numbers, right? So what if I come right here? That has an even. But if I look at column three, one, three, and five, well, those are all odd numbers. Okay. And if we come right here, three, five, and seven, well, those are all odd. And we just, you know, skip. We go right here, column seven, one, three, and nine. All right, you're starting to see a pattern, right? Now, my previous video of will set solve this puzzle, the thing I talked about is we're trying to capture two distinct sets, one that contains three to five similar candidates, another that contains three to five complementary candidates. So in these five columns of the digits one to nine, what five candidates did we capture? One, three, five, seven, nine. We captured pretty much all the odds, right? Great. So that's one distinct set. So now we want to look at the columns and go, can we capture the evens? And so which ones contain even cells? Well, right here, column two, column four. And yeah, you go, okay, well, you capture a seven, you capture a nine. But in doing so, we also got two even digits. Right here, it looks like it's a trade-off, five and an eight, and then right here. And we want to get as many givens as we can because the more givens we have, that's the more knowns we have from one set we can put into the other set. All right, so we're looking to do uh, two distinct sets. So odds and evens, purple and orange, the shapes. Um, I used rows and columns, and you saw that worked out really well. You may have tried to attempt doing this looking at the blocks, but what you'll see uh, is that these blocks, like the 1589, doesn't really mesh that well with another block. Um, and in a way, you know, this is kind of like a, a thatch looking design. Um, doesn't really help you if you want and try this by using, uh, using the blocks. But you can go ahead and try. Um, other thing to keep in mind too, this is really a good candidate for set. And one of the things is you notice with this column come down 719, like the givens here in this column don't match where the givens are in the rows of uh, for the other set. So you see how this seven's right here? It's not going to be eliminated by going across this row. Just like how this eight wasn't eliminated going down these columns. It's nice. It's nice. You know, and then like when we when we did this column, you know, the one and nine didn't wasn't right here. So that gives us keeps us with more knowns uh, in the columns and more knowns in the rows and then we're eliminating these common cells that are in both that we don't uh, need to uh, worry about as we're trying to apply a set to it. Okay, so sh shapes are these rows and columns. Can we match the number of knowns to unknowns? Okay, one thing you might notice is we have uh, five columns and four rows. So there's an inequality there, but we'll see if we can match that up. So let's look. First of all, we have to do is we got to eliminate any that appear in both. So how this seven appears in both, then this nine appears in both, and you can just eliminate any other. It's basically saying, okay, in this, what set tells us is that we know, you know, the, the knowns in the purple have to be somewhere in the unknowns in the orange and vice versa. Well, if we have a known purple and we know where it is in the orange, we can just cancel those out. We don't need to worry about that. So same thing with the fives. You got one five purple and a five in the orange and then anything else I believe the three here we can get rid of. So three purple and three orange. So we eliminated those. Now let's start counting here. So let's see how many known orange do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11. Okay, 11. 
and it represents all the digits one, three, five, seven, and nine are at least shown there once. All right, how many unknown purple do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, 11 known orange, six unknown purple. Can we rectify that? Yes. And the reason we can is that we have an extra column of the orange. So we have an extra column of 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. So that means we have an extra set of those digits, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. So we can eliminate those five from our knowns. You can eliminate one whole set of these. And now you have six. That puts down the six uh, knowns that we could apply to these six unknowns. So we know that these unknowns have to be 1, 5, 7, 9. using set equivalence theory. Okay, and I've covered this before in a couple of my other uh, videos where there's inequalities. So hopefully this is not too familiar or too unfamiliar to you when I'm talking about here, but this is a great puzzle to kind of explain these points. Now let's go and look at the purples. One, two, three, four, five, six known purples. How many unknowns do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now you're like, Timberlake, dude, ten. Last time you had eleven, now you have ten. That ain't right. Well, this time when we're going from four columns to, to five, we're going from four sets of digits, uh, one through nine here in the purple, to five. Well, there's only four digits in the purples, right? The four different candidates, two, four, six, and eight. So taking that six, you add candidates, two, four, six, and eight, to make an additional five to balance out the five columns. And so that's all we're adding. It actually works out. So six plus four is 10. So this is, has a perfect balance for set. It, uh, it, and, and so there wasn't any additional ones where we had to fill in all the extra candidates or there wasn't any, you know, we had five and four. So it wasn't like uh, we were missing a nine. We had to add in nines. Great. Now the last bit, does this make any meaningful solves? And so I asked Sam, I said, hey, can you give me a puzzle that is good for set? And I actually asked him if it's good for set and this other thing called MSLS, multi-sector lock sets. Um, I had heard about multi-sector lock sets on a discussion that Philip Newman had with ranks. I'll put a link to that video below because Philip does a much better job explaining it. Multi-sector lock sets came out, MSLS, uh, MSLS came out about 10 years ago and it is similar to set, but it approaches the puzzle like from a reverse opposite way, using like the unknowns versus using the knowns to the unknowns. And so the point here is if you find a puzzle and someone says, oh yeah, I used MSLS to, to solve it, guess what? You can apply set and you can solve that puzzle as well. So this puzzle can be solved either way. And so Phil or Sam said, hey, here's one, you can do it. And so I went I, and I'm trying it here and I'm showing you it's working out really well. But again, the last bit of this, does this make meaningful solves? Well, if you put this and you tried this on your own, you're going to have a heck of a time solving this puzzle. It's very, very tough. The computer solver uh, said that you need forcing chains, some almost lock sets to get to it. I'm going to tell you the key to solving this puzzle, and it's going to be a spoiler, hopefully, is you got to figure out this cell right here, row three, column eight. Once you figure out row three, column eight, this puzzle makes sense, and there's a clean solve path the rest of the way. So, what can this be? Well, because of set, look at where these sevens are. Seven and a seven. Where can a seven be in here, right? It can be there or there. But because of set, we know this can only be two, four, six, or eight. This cell has to be a seven. Now that you figure out that this cell is a seven, we have a nice clean solve path for the rest of this puzzle. In fact, I'm not going to add any more candidates. I'm just going to solve using, you know, basic techniques to get through the rest of this. And let's follow along as we get through it. All right. So now we place the seven right here. Where can a one go up here in block three? We got a one here. We got a one here, and we got a one there. So this has to be your one. Okay. Now where can a three go? We have a three here and a three there and there. So this has to be a three. Nice. And now three, three, we're gonna three go right here in block six, right there, right? And now we place the three right here. 
working a three go here in block five. There's a three, there's a three. That has to be a three, right? And then working a three B here in block four, three, three. That has to be a three. See how that's working? And now we come down here and we can finish out the threes, right? Do you see where the next three has to be? Based on all of those threes, it's gotta be down right there. Okay, so we have solved all of the threes. Okay, now let's look at the fives. We got two fives right here. We're gonna five be in block four. We have a five coming up there. There's only one spot left for a five. Okay, and so now you have a five and a five. And you see how because of set, well, and this five, that a five can't be right there. We know that has to be a five. And now five, five, this has to be a five. And we have solved almost all the fives. But look now here, five, five, and a five. This has to be your five. And where can a five be in block eight? Right there. And so kind of using the set, you know, I'm avoiding the purples and the, the orange. I already know what's already in there. And I, I kind of move myself around. We solved all the fives in this puzzle. All right, let's look over to the sevens. We got a seven right here. So we're, since the seven's coming on column eight, we're gonna seven be here in block nine. Seven's gotta be right there, right? Which creates a one, nine, naked pair right there. But you can see these sevens in columns uh, four and five, right? So now seven can only be in one spot here in block eight. And it'll only be well in one spot here in block seven. Great. Okay, and we use a little bit of uh, deduction here for block six. See how you have a two and a four right here and they cut across row four? Well, that two and four have to be in, then in these two spots here in block six, right? Because the two and the four has to be somewhere and these are the only two spots remaining. So this, this has to be a two and a four. So that means this has to be a six or a seven. Well, we have a seven come up column nine. So that's your seven. And then we could solve that for six. Uh, and so now we can finish off the seven, 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 this has to be your seven. Nice, huh? Okay, so let's do some clean up here along column uh, seven here. So you see how you have this six and eight, you know, this can only be a two and a four, right? You have a six and eight right there, so this can only be a two and a four. And I said, I wasn't going to make any more marks. I'm just going to not show those marks, but I will do some elimination. So if this can only be a two four and that can only be a two four, the two fours are limited to these two spots in column seven, which means this can no longer be a two or four. This has to be your eight and that has to be your six. Cool. And now, you know, this is two four, two four. We know that is a two four. And so let's go right here. See how this eight cuts across column or row nine? So the eight's gonna be in these two spots right here. Hopefully you can see the eight can be either there or there. I haven't marked that spot yet. But since an eight can be there or there, where can an eight be here in block five? Well, it can't be in either two spots because this is a pointing pair right here. So an eight's gotta be in one of those two spots. Well, if an eight's in one of those two spots, this is another pointing pair. So this can't be an eight and that can't be an eight. And it's neither can this spot in the middle. So you have an eight right here cutting across. You have, imagine these are pointing pair eights coming across right here. Eight coming down. Well, the only place left for an eight, the block four is right there. And now you have eight here and here. Only one place left for an eight and block seven is right there. And now remember this was a pointing pair. There's two only two eights there. We just saw the row eight for an eight. So that has to be your other eight. And so you can see, we're just kind of working our way through this puzzle, nice and clean. And I, I love this. I love how set equivalence theory works uh, and, and gets us through these parts of the puzzle. So let's continue on. Um, you'll notice across row four, we only have one spot left to fill in and that has to be a one. And so that has to be a one, there's a one, and here's a one, this has to be a one. And how, what else can we need to solve? Well, there's two spots for one here. Right now, there's two spots for one right there. So we can't solve the rest of the ones just yet. But with this one nine, 
and one nine, it means the last two spots have to be uh, two and a four and a two and a four. And this has to be a two and a six because of this four right there. So two four, that's a two four, two four six, and this is a two four f. Yeah, so we can't solve that part uh, just yet. But we can move on with this puzzle. And so let's go to the next spot that we want to like focus on. So let's talk about these two fours again. Remember how this has to be a two or four and that has to be a two or four, right? Well, if you look across row six here, where can a nine be? Well, it can't be here because of this nine. It can't be here because we know that has to be a two or four and this nine. Um, it can't be here because of this nine. So that has to be your nine. And since this is a nine and we have a nine right here, the only spot left for a nine in block four is right there. And then you have a nine here and a nine here. And this is just simple cross hatching. We can solve that for a nine. And now we have two spots left for a nine to where I can't finish off the nines right there just yet. But we did make a significant amount of progress. Because remember, two four and a two four. Well, what's the last cell going to be in row six? Well, it can't be a two or four. It has to be a six. And since this is a six, these are the two four naked pair. That's a two four naked pair. And so let's look how that affects things. Well, we know the six is here. Six can only be in these two spots in column two. So that's a, a pointing pair, right? The sixes, which means the six cannot be here anymore. And a six can't be here. This has to be your six here in block seven. Nice, huh? All right. And so then we know that a six, this has to be one of these two spots. We see a six in column six. So there's your six here in block five, which means we can fill out the eight and finish up block five. And now six here, a six here, if the six come across row eight, coming down, you know, this has to be your six. Great. And since this four is coming down column four, the only place left for four in block eight is right there, which means this has to be your two. And then we can cut across. And see now you see you have a full house, right? There's only one spot remaining. You can go right here and we can fill it out for four. Um, and in case you're going, you know, how do I how do I clean up a puzzle from this point? Uh, I'll put a link to my um, single cell solving video right here. You can go check that out. I kind of look at all different ways of the best way to kind of move on in a puzzle. And the first thing you want to look at is, is a full house. So like right here, you have a full house with the block. Knowing I can easily look here and say, okay, the only thing remaining is a two. So I can put a two right there. And then you, doing the single cell, the going the cross hatching is also, is they are the fastest methods to get through a puzzle. So I see two here, two here. This is going to be a two full house. Move that to a four. You see now that can't be a two anymore. That has to be a four. That has to be a two. That has to be a four. Uh, those markings we put in play are really helping us solve the rest of that puzzle, which is nice. So then come back up here. Okay, we got a four. And four is here and here. So we know the only place left for four up in block two is right there. Two, eight, two, eight means this has to be your four, which now we have a full house coming right here. So that's your two and that's your four, which we talked about previously. And you see how it just kind of keeps filling the puzzle out, right? And so now we can look and kind of figure out what needs to go up here. Well, we're missing our six. Six, six. There's your six. Here's your two. We know that. That's an eight. That's a two. I love taking care of all these markings here. And I can look across either row one or row two because these are both full houses, right? And so that's going to be your nine, which will take care of these ones and nines down there. This, and now we look and we can solve the last one remaining right there. So we have two spots left up here. So you look across real quick, row two, and we know, hey, this has to be your two. And then the last thing is an eight. So check out these other videos. One is going to be a Sam Kalman lines puzzle. I love, you'll really enjoy it. It has to do with jellyfish. And also another set video I think you're going to really enjoy. Thank you, Sam, for recommending this puzzle. I appreciate it. I think it's a great application of set. Don't forget to buy me a coffee link. Thank you so much for watching.